Welcome back to the special edition of Hannity in Justice in America. One of the most blatant injustices occurring in America today is the underreporting of the president's historic accomplishments since he has taken office. As the unemployment rate hits a historic low, wages are rising at their fastest rate in a decade. This as stocks are hitting record setting numbers and trade optimism remains high. And now at least one far left Trump hater is starting to see the writing on the wall. Watch. If the vote were today, I believe he would win the electoral states that he would need. Because living out there, I will tell you, his level of support has not gone down one mm -hmm. inch. In fact, I'd say it's even more rabid uh, than it was before. More rabid, considering what I just laid out for you, Americans in general, whether people voted for him or not, are responding to not a strange economic dynamic. It is a direct result of policy and leadership. America hasn't seen that for a very long time. Joining me now is conservative columnist Jeffrey Lord and Women for Trump national co-chair Gina Loudon. Jeffrey and Gina, welcome aboard. Thanks for coming on. Great to be with Hello you. Hello there, Tammy. How are uh, you? Uh, Jeffrey, uh, it, it's fascinating, isn't it, with everything that now is undeniable, that you can't say it's from what Obama did or it was brought to us by leprechauns or some other kind of magical thing that occurred and we're all in a dream. It really is not just right now an extraordinary economy, but we can look at this having uh, a, a, a several generation impact in the future for 100 years. And when it comes to the establishment's understanding of what it takes to make this country work well. So w when we think about the lie of the media and their refusal to cover this, does it matter? Because as Michael Moore said, Americans are feeling this. Well, they are feeling this. And, you know, I never thought that I would find myself agreeing with Michael Moore on anything. <laughs> but just remember, uh, he, his first film was Roger and Me about what Donald Trump today would call forgotten Americans, blue-collar right. workers who were, were ditched out of jobs and all this sort of thing in Michigan. Well, Donald Trump carried Michigan. He carried my home state of Pennsylvania. So Michael Moore is exactly right. In those states, Donald Trump has, as everywhere else, but in those states, he is popular because he kept his promises. Uh, the other week I was at his Hershey rally. Holy cow. You, you know, I mean, these people are just, they are hell bent on getting him reelected. They, they think he's been treated very unfairly. They think they have been treated very fairly, that he's kept their promises. They are determined to reelect him. So this is a very big deal. It's always as James Carville with Bill Clinton said the economy's stupid. Yes. And here we go again with that. And great point about Moore, who you would think really with that film, Roger and Me, could be seen as a populist in a way and would understand it. And yet he's still refusing, calling support for the president rabid. But Gina, it really is seeing for the first time in perhaps two generations what leadership will do, what, what a president who is more connected with us than the system can accomplish. Isn't that what we're seeing, I think, at the grassroots level? Well, Tammy, you and I have been watching this since 2015 when we would debate people over and over again, many of whom now are, if he wants to say rapidly, I guess, advocating for this president today. People who were never Trumpers that I never thought would be standing arm in arm with me supporting him, who now he has won over because this is what he does. But the difference is key. In 2016, Tammy, people were supporting him because of a bet. They found him authentic and they fell in love with Donald Trump's authenticity. But today, Today they have fallen in love with promises made, promises kept. And I hear from these people every single day with women for Trump. And where do they think, where do the Democrats think that these 1.5 million women that Donald Trump has pulled out of poverty are going to go on election day? Where do they think that the 3.5 million women that are now employed because of Donald Trump are going to vote? How do they think they're going to vote on election day? Not even to mention the Hispanics, the African Americans, the Asian Americans who before did not have jobs but because of Donald Trump do today. How do they think they're going to vote on election day? So Michael Moore's predictions are absolutely true. So you can either join him or you can complain about him and continue to call his supporters names. Yeah, I'll tell you what's remarkable is the nature of Americans expecting or at least hoping that maybe something would change because we knew something was wrong at the core of it. Jeffrey, I'll give you the, the last word uh, in the sense of the Democrats will continue to operate through hate and lies and attempts to assassinate a character. Uh, do you think the president's going to be fine through the next year? 
Oh, absolutely. You know, one of the things I have to say about the Democratic field, they're boring. There's no John F. Kennedy yeah. or Barack Obama True. or Bill Clinton or from the Republican side or Ronald Reagan or Donald Trump. There is nobody electrifying the Democratic base. And nobody. they have no ideas. So right. That's a very good think, point. Just when it comes right. to charisma and there's no right. ideas. And of course, now Donald Trump has a policy and a record to, to run on. Yes, excellent. Jeff and Gina, That's thank exactly. you for joining me. Appreciate it. Thank